In this video, we're going to show you how to install the ignition switch actuator on your Ford Ranger located right here on the side of the steering column. Using a 13 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove our ground terminal nut here. I'll go ahead and spin the terminal loose, work that off and set it aside. Let's go ahead and loosen our positive terminal here. I'll go ahead and loosen and remove this here. On the bottom half of your steering column, there is a cover right here. It's gonna be three Phillips head screws. Let's go ahead, loosen and remove those screws. Once we have the screws out, let's go ahead and pop this lower cover off. And just slide that out. I'm going to go ahead and remove our gauge cluster trim. There are normally three screws that go across the top. These are 930 seconds. Our trim only has two in place. So we want to go ahead and remove the ones that we have in here. We use a trim tool to just kind of pop out our bezel right here for our radio stuff. Now underneath here, there's gonna be a couple more bolts here or screws. Using our 930 seconds, we're gonna go ahead and remove those as well. Pop out that screw. I'm just gonna pull that forward a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our trim here, and we're just gonna slowly work its way around. Let's go ahead and remove the two screws holding on our lower knee panel here. One of the screws is just to the right of the emergency brake release lever. And the other one is just to the right of the hood release. Let's go ahead and pop off our knob for our headlight switch. And this should allow us to go ahead and work this unit up. Let's go to the other side and release that. I'm going to go ahead and release our clip here for our dimmer switch. Just pry up on these little tabs here. Use your pry tool and pop that up and off. Set your trim bezel aside. Lift up on the column cover. Just pop 
this up. Remove this unit, set it aside. On the back side where your hood release handle is, there's gonna be two seven millimeter screws in here. We're gonna go ahead, loosen and remove those. Once these are both removed, the panel should be able to be pulled out of place and set aside. that off, remove the panel, set it aside. I'm gonna go ahead and remove a series of these eight millimeter screws here holding this lower metal panel in place. Remove the panel, set that aside. There's a seven millimeter bolt right inside here. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove that. It's gonna allow us to disconnect this bulkhead connector right here. And use our trim tool right here. Pop this connector off like so. I'm gonna press on this little tab right here and then we're gonna disconnect this connector right here. Go ahead and pop these connectors off. Disconnect these by pressing on this little tab. This brown connector. I'm gonna lift up on the two tabs on either side. We have a pocket screwdriver. You wanna lift up on this end here, as well as this one here. This bulkhead connector right here has a retainer on it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and simply use our trim tool and pop that loose. Now this harness here from the bulkhead has a few wires that goes up behind here. We're not gonna disconnect this until we can get the steering column dropped down. Then we'll have access to the other connector up on top. Now underneath our steering column here, there are four nuts that we have to remove. The first two we're gonna tackle. This is one right here, and there's one right on the other side right here. It's gonna use our 13 millimeter socket, and we're gonna go ahead and remove those. So to get to the next two bolts, we're gonna follow the steering column down. We're going underneath And here is one of them we have to get to right here. And then the other one is over 
and this is it right here. So it's a 13 millimeter on both sides. Let's go ahead and loosen those there. And at that point there, the steering column will drop down. So be prepared to capture that. Pretty much you're just gonna move whatever you have to to get that harness out of the way. Get one out here. All right. So with one hand, you're holding the steering wheel up. Lower that down. Now we can just want your connectors and harnesses. Slowly tilt this down and rest it on the seat. So now we have our steering column dropped down. We want to go ahead and pull off the top of our column here. Just going to stretch that over, pop that off. Now we have a wiring harness right here that comes over to the back of our turn signal stock. These wires go through on the back side and come to our harness on the bottom. So what we have to do is we're gonna remove the two Torx screws here. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the two Torx screws holding our turn signal stock. And we're gonna remove this whole unit with the wiring harness, pull it right off to the side, and that's gonna give us the freedom to go ahead and pull our steering column out. these out here. That'll loosen up the main harness. Let's go ahead and get our turn signal stock removed. And we have one screw right on the top here. And there's going to be one right on the very bottom of it, positioned in the same spot, but just below. Set that screw aside. Good. So now that we have the turn signal stock removed, we have found one last wire. And this is on the right side. And there's a little ground wire right here. This black wire. And it goes around, there's a bolt right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a mirror in here try and show you there in the mirror you can see the green headed bolt so we need to go ahead and remove that and that'll loosen up that ground wire I'm going to use an eight millimeter socket Now we're going to go ahead and follow the base of our steering column in. And what we want to go to is this bolt right here. This is the bolt for our intermediate shaft attaching to the base of our steering column. Let's go ahead and use a 13 millimeter socket and remove this bolt. I'm gonna keep the steering wheel straight and pull this out. Then we have our steering column on the bench. You wanna make sure that your ignition is in its locked position so our column is locked to where the steering wheel. At this point here, I'm gonna go ahead and use some tape. I'm gonna run this through. And the reason why we're doing this is eventually the ignition lock cylinder will be removed and there'll be no more locking of this system here but we don't want the steering column to spin around because that can ruin internals on the inside of the steering wheel. So we're gonna tape this down in a position. So we wanna go ahead and disconnect our harness from these clips right here. So I'm just gonna use a small pick and open up the locking clips here and pull our harness out. Now on the top up here, we want to go ahead and remove this clip.
Now on the top right here, we have three T30s Torx bolts here. Let's go ahead and loosen those and remove them. Go ahead and lift up on this unit here. Underneath, there's gonna be a plastic collar right here. I'm gonna go ahead and lift that up. I'm just gonna use a small pick, get underneath that and work that up a little bit. Now remember that this collar is gonna be facing upward And it is keyed, so it can only go on one way. Now go ahead and remove this bracket. I'm gonna set all these pieces aside. Just go ahead and remove these two screws holding this ignition block here. You remove this here. You wanna pay attention to the position of the post or the pin and where this is located here as well. On the side over here, we have a T30 screw or bolt. There's one on this side as well. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen and remove those. Now right here is a large heavy duty spring inside and it goes to this pivot rod and this latches over here. We need to compress this spring. This is gonna unlatch from here and we'll be able to slip this whole unit up and off. We're simply going to use a C-clamp and I'm gonna use a nut as a shim. I'm gonna put that right on here. I wanna go ahead and tighten down the C-clamp. See that spring compressing? And as it compresses, it's lifting up on our latch here. Let's go ahead and slowly lift this up. Once that is disconnected, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this. Remove the C-clamp and the nut. I'm gonna lift up on this unit and be careful right here. There's a plastic block. This block fits into the shaft right here, and there's also the actuator pin right here. Slide that out, and that pin fits inside that notch right there. I want to remember how that is installed. Right here is the component we're going to be replacing. Now this is going to be removed from the vehicle, but it's in a critical position right now. What I'm going to do is use a Sharpie marker, and I'm going to mark around here where it's pretty much lined up with the aluminum housing. Later on, we're gonna transfer this line over to our new component. Right here, we have our key lock detent. We're gonna go ahead and remove this with a T30 Torx bit. There is a spring on here. Loosen that, pull it straight off, and set that aside. Next, we wanna go ahead and remove our key lock cylinder from the column itself. So go ahead and install your key turn this and we're going to watch this pin right in the cylinder right here we should get to a certain point where we can actually cause that to go in there it is once that pin is in there we're going to go ahead and pull the cylinder out okay remove your lock cylinder and set that aside we have our little key security clip right here just going to pop this up and off Set that aside. Now inside where the lock cylinder is, there is a green gasket or collar or whatever you want to call it. I want to go ahead and get in there and pop this out. Slide that out. You want to pay attention to this because it has little locking tabs. Those must be facing down on our reinstallation. Inside here, we have a little plate. We're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. And what we wanna do is we want to rotate this counterclockwise. And it's basically going to unlock it from a keyway in there. We should be able to go ahead and use our pick. 
can also use a pair of needle nose pliers. Let's grab the edge of it. And then there's a unit right here. So basically what we did was we, it was locked in position like this and you got to rotate it so that the two ends fit into the open notches fore and aft inside here and it'll slide right out. Inside here is our last piece we need to grab. And what we're gonna do is pay attention to the orientation of this slot. I'm gonna go ahead and use a Sharpie marker and mark where the position of this is. Don't forget we have our mark on our actuator unit right here. Now when we pull out this inside piece, it is intersecting with the gear on our rod. That is why, that's why it's so critical that when we reinstall this, that the rod is in a correct position and the key unit is in its correct position. Just grab it with the pliers and gently slide it out like so. Let's go ahead and remove our unit. There it is. Now we're gonna go and line these up. Go ahead and transfer over the mark in there for that position. Now let's go ahead and install it. Again, insert this unit here. And bring it up to that marker point. Drop our gear down inside. Okay, so at this point here, this gear is intersecting with the actuator rod. We want to make sure that our marker points are lined up here as well as the marker on the outside here. Drop this down and get this installed. I am going to pay attention to this notch right here and match that up with our lower gear unit right there. I'm going to lower that down inside. This should pop right into place. Now I'm going to go ahead and use our screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and turn this and it'll lock right into place like that. Okay, now that we have this unit with the lock in there, Let's go ahead and reinstall our green locking collar here. And just press it down, snap it into place. Once this is in position, we can go ahead and grab our lock cylinder. You have your lock pin right here, and that's gonna line up on the bottom. Let's go ahead and lower this down inside. Pop that in. Go ahead and turn the key and the pin is gonna come back out. Remove the key. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install our detent here, or our lock unit. Now we went ahead and popped our key back in. The reason for that is we need to unlock this unit here. Because right now, we're locked in for the ignition key. So we're just gonna turn that. When you turn it, you're gonna see the actuator rod move. Once that's in its up position, we can go ahead and install this unit right here. And this is for our key release mechanism. Turn our key, release. Now we're gonna install the tail part of our steering column here and we have our plastic block right here. Now this is gonna play a critical role. This, when we install it, is gonna fit up inside here. We have to install it on the base of the column first. Go ahead and put the pin inside the slot. Line up this block like so. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up this here. Slide this down over and install the block into the tail shaft of the column. Slide that down. This point here, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our C-clamp. We're gonna compress this here so that it latches onto our pin right here. Drops down into position. Let's go ahead and release this. This is now latched onto our pin. Let's go ahead and install our two pivot bolts that go on each side of the column. You wanna be careful with these here. You don't want to cross thread them. So that's why I'm doing them with a Little hand ratchet first to make sure everything goes in nice and easy. We have our pin here that needs to line up with our unit right here. Get and get our screws started. 
once you have those screws out a couple threads, you can go ahead and snug it down. This does not have to be super tight. Let's install our tail bracket here. I'm going to take our spacer or shim, slide that down into place, install our bushing or bearing. Let's go ahead and install our three bolts on the back side. Now these units here inside of this bearing unit, there is a metal sleeve inside. So you want to snug it up and uh, not crack this unit here. That's why there's metal sleeves in here. So you should be all set. Let's go ahead and install our snap ring. Work this down into position. Lock that into place. I'm going to do the same for this upper one here. At this point, we can go ahead and run our ground wire around. And we're just going to go ahead and get that ground wire installed now. We're going to leave these disconnected for now. It's, make it, it's going to make it easier for us to reconnect these inside the vehicle and then we'll go ahead and snap these buttons back into the original retaining holes. Go ahead and feed your steering column in. I'm going to put the tail part of the steering shaft into. Go ahead and feed our wires up and over here. It's for our turn signal lever. Let's go ahead and get our harness lined up right here. There's two screws that go on the top of the harness here. I'm going to get these started a few threads. And we have two screws for our combination switch here. Get that started a few threads. Go ahead and get the bottom one started a few threads. Then we'll go ahead and snug those two down. Let's go ahead and press our steering column up into place here. Install our front brace here. I'm going to get all four of these nuts on there and tighten down. The base of your steering column with the intermediate shaft connects to it. Let's go ahead and get our bolt installed. Let's go ahead and snug that down. Let's go ahead and connect our gray connector to the gray connector. Just line that up. Snap that together. I'm going to push this up into place here. For a bulkhead connector, I'm going to just press that into the side of our steering column. Go ahead and snug this bolt down here. We have our relay right here. We're just going to snap into the position down below. And on the right side, we have two connectors. We have our brown connector. Let's go ahead and line this up here. Go 
put that together and we have our gray connector here. Line that up. And we'll snap these up into place using their little retainer pins. We install our lower metal panel here. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these bolts started a few threads by hand. And once they're all started, we'll come on back and tighten them down. On the bottom of our panel here, there's gonna be four screws that hold it into place. Let's go ahead and line up the upper panel. Kind of get this into place. I'm gonna start by putting in our far right screw right here. All right, so we have that screw started. I'm gonna come on over to our left side here and get this one started here. And we have two in the middle that actually go through our hood release bracket or hood release latch. Tighten these down. Snug it down, not super tight, but once it, once you feel that screw bottom out, you want to go maybe another good half a turn. There it is bottomed out. Good half a turn. Bottomed out. about there, a good half a turn. It's bottomed out, half a turn. Now we have our upper gauge trim bezel right here. We wanna go ahead and install our connector and our headlight switch. Now our headlight switch has two little tabs here with holes in it. And our original dash would have had two plastic posts right here to put two small screws in there. Well, ours is broken. So on your particular model, if these aren't broken, you're gonna wanna go ahead, install your headlight switch, and then put the screws into it. In our case here, we're simply going to connect our big bulkhead connector right here. This is our dimmer switch. Snap that into place. I'm gonna bring our trim bezel down, kinda get this lined up in. I just kind of get this kind of in its main vicinity here. In our case here, we're simply going to put our headlight knob into place and we're gonna use our knob here to secure that into place here. Okay, now that we have that lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and push our trim bezel back in into place. Just make sure everything lines up. Line up our buttons here. Grabbed our pick here, our little hook. And we're just gonna pull up a little bit on this little metal stud here, or a little retainer clip. And we're gonna just flex this up and into place. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, repeat the process. 
we install our hardware up on the top of our gauge cluster here. Now you would normally have three. Our particular vehicle only had two in the top here. So it's just missing a third screw. We're gonna install the two that we have. Let's get and install our radio here. And the top will snap into place. And then we have our two screws for the lower portion here. Make sure that those are snug but not super tight. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and fit our lid on here. I'm gonna press in on our hazard button here, get us a little bit more clearance. Install our lower column cover here. And this in general should line up our pins with the lower cover to the upper. I'm going to go ahead and get one screw in on this side here, and we'll start that just a couple threads. And then we'll come on over to the other side and get that lined up. Snug down our third screw on the other side. Now at this point here, you want to go ahead and put your key in the lock cylinder. Go ahead and make sure everything operates as it should. Good install our positive battery terminal. Let's go ahead and snug that down. Once we have that tight, let's go ahead and grab our negative terminal, pop that on. Let's go ahead and tighten down this side. And once that snugs down, you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.